In this tutorial, we're going to look at subsurface scattering in Blender 4.0 in a bit more depth than my previous video, where I discussed some general changes between version 3.6 and 4.0. The user interface was also in a state of change because of ongoing development. And so this video will show the final UI for the principled BSDF as it should appear in the final released version of Blender 4.0. We're going to use this teapot as one example, and then we're going to use another couple of examples. But the first thing that we want to take a look at is the fact that we've obviously got the new panels user interface, both in the nodes and in the main material editor on the right. When we take a look at this, we're going to note that there are three entries under subsurface. In Blender 3.6, this random walk, it was at the top of the material list, and it wasn't really entirely clear that it belonged with subsurface scattering, but now it's really quite clear. When we open it up, we're going to notice three entries. The Christensen Burley is more of a fast solve approximation method, and we're not going to focus on that. But we are going to focus on random walk and the new one, random walk skin. So this functionality was there in 3.6, but now it's been renamed into something specific that kind of indicates what that functionality is really designed to help replicate. So that's why they use the word skin now. And we're also going to talk about the anisotropy feature because this is interesting. So we're, we're going to go into a little bit more depth with that than I did in my other two videos. Since we have random walk here in Blender 4.0, we want to jump back over to 3.6 for a minute and look at what it was doing. So we have random walk and we also have random walk fixed radius. When you set up these files, these transfer over, but they transfer over in a little bit of a different way. When we bring that in over into Blender 4.0, random walk fixed radius becomes just plain random walk in 4.0. And the basic random walk, it becomes random walk skin in 4.0. We're first going to look at random walk. Let's look at this teapot because what I found is that the random walk generally works better for sort of hard body things that have subsurface scattering, whereas skin is obviously meant for more organic types of objects. If we come over to this jade type of teapot, just to get a sense for this, for its scale. Now I'm using inches. I'm sorry if you're used to using metric. It's kind of a big teapot. It's almost 17 inches in total length, just to give you a sense of scale. Because we're going to come down to scale, and that's really your starting point. Once you've set the mode, whether it's random walk or random walk skin, then you really first want to pay attention to the scale. Now I just want to say as a side note, that to me, radius and scale as labels should be swapped. I don't know why they labeled them this way. Scale is the scattering depth or distance, which is an absolute value and uses the scene units you've chosen to specify that depth. But what they have termed radius are three relative scalar values that alter scattering depth independently for each RGB channel. It's just backwards in my mind how they've labeled them, but it is what it is. When we look at this, we go from not having it on, and then when we take weight up to 1.0, we get this. It didn't change radically, but you can see that there is a little bit of subsurface. Look over here at the spout, and you can see a little bit of a change right there. Let me turn it back off, and then back on so you can see. If we come in and we want to colorize this, so we would think in 3.6, you would kind of think about maybe adding a subsurface color, but that's no longer available. So we come down to the radius functions, which are actually scalar functions, and we adapt those. Each of these channels is R, G, and B. And you can also just plug an RGB node into those to drive them. But we're just going to use them numerically because they're scalar values. We want G to be predominant, so we would scale back radius for red and blue. So I'm going to take and put 4.4 and 0.4 and leave G at 1.0. So red and blue get scaled back. And then we end up with this. So you can definitely see, look up here at the spout, that it gets quite a bit greener. It's had a little bit of an effect. We can definitely see that. 
again, if I go back to with all of those values being the same, we see a little bit of effect in some of these thinner areas. And then when I go back to the adjustment, we can see that primarily here in the spout. But now let's go in and change the anisotropy. So we change anisotropy from its default of zero to one, and we get this. So it darkened up a little bit. It actually became slightly greener, but kind of what's going on right here, because you're going to note in the spout area, we don't see that stronger subsurface effect happening. So, so what is this anisotropy thing doing? At the value of zero, the default value, the subsurface scattering is happening in what's called an isotropic way. The rays hit the surface and they scatter around in sort of a uniform direction and some of them exit back out. And so that's what gives us the subsurface appearance. When you set it up to one, anisotropic means the ray strikes and instead of scattering sort of uniformly in all directions, the directionality of the light kind of continues and the scattering happens more so along the path of the light with some of it still kind of backscattering and coming out of the surface. So that is what anisotropic means. It means something biasing in a direction as opposed to being uniformly happening in all directions. That's kind of why we lost some of the effect right here at the spout because the rays are kind of driving in and they kind of keep going in the direction, scattering in the direction they're going as opposed to scattering in all directions with some of it coming out back at us. So I think at this point, what I want to do is maybe amplify the subsurface scattering by increasing the scale. We're using a value of one. And when we double that to a value of two, then we get this. So it was kind of a subtle effect, but you can see that by increasing that scattering distance, we get more of a visible effect here. So what happens if then we take the anisotropy and drop it back down to its default of zero, but with the larger two inch scattering distance, we get this. This is how you can think of anisotropy is that if you leave it at the default of zero, more of it is going to appear to scatter in the direction of you, the viewer, but it's also relative to the direction of the light. So it's really kind of two things that are happening. It's really one of those variables that you're just going to have to test on a case by case basis to see if it delivers a look that you want or you don't want. So we're continuing now in this next example using just random walk. We haven't gotten to random walk skin yet. I've got a glass here with a milk like substance in it, and I've got two lights that are sort of backlighting. We can clearly see the directionality of these lights because of the shadows. In these examples, the only variable we're going to look at is the anisotropy. And this is with anisotropy of zero, meaning it is the isotropic random scattering. It's non-directional. But because we have these backlighting, a lot of the light is scattering inside and sort of coming back out the back. If we change anisotropy to one, look what happens. Do you see how the directionality of the light scatters in and it kind of maintains enough that more of that light actually scatters towards us, continuing along the direction that the light was going. Let's look at another example. Here we have again, a single light source that's kind of side and backlit. We have anisotropy of zero. So it's isotropic. It's randomly scattering. As soon as we turn on anisotropy of one, we get this and look at that. Isn't that fascinating? The anisotropic directionality keeps the light sort of moving forward in the direction that the light was going, and we get more of it scattering out on our side from where we're viewing it. Let's dive in now and take a look at random walk skin. This model is going to start out looking like a chocolate bar, and we're going to end up like more something organic. So the first thing that we want to do is come over and actually enable subsurface scattering by taking weight up to 1.0. But then we need to give it a scale. This is the absolute value for the depth of the scattering function. And I think just based on the size of the model, I'm going to do three centimeters. And then we end up with that. So now we can actually see just a little bit of subsurface scattering going on, but it's, it's still not very strong. So this is where we turn on random walk skin by simply switching it on and look at the magnitude of difference that that makes. Random walk skin has a bunch of adjustments to how it operates in order to make it more organic like. And so that's why we see such a large difference. 
Our goal now is to start making adjustments to really make it function more organically, given those parameter changes. So the first thing that I want to do is actually come over to the radius. These are scaling values for each of the RGB channels. So let's come down to the green and blue channels and scale those way back because the flesh would be, have more of a reddish color to it. So I'm going to take both of these and go down to 0.3. And that really makes quite a significant difference. The next thing that we want to do is go down to anisotropy. The developers have said that for organic forms like flesh, you want to use an anisotropy value of 0.8. So this is where we will come down and punch in 0.8. Look at that. It's definitely starting to look more flesh-like. The next appropriate adjustment would be to take the scale itself to maybe drop that back altogether. And I think going down to two centimeters would be in a good adjustment. And you can see that it, that helps it not to be so overblown out. But now I want to go down to weight and I want to drop that down to 0.5. And that will mix it back to a full, just diffuse version of it. Let's do one more practice run here by setting up a lighter skin type of material. First thing that you do is set your base color, and I've got kind of an average skin tone. The next thing that we do is we take roughness and we need to set it up because it's the reflections are way too sharp. I will set that to a value of three, which I think is a good starting point. The next thing is to expand subsurface and we need to change from random walk to random walk skin. And then we need to set the weight up to enable it to 1.0. But because we don't have a scale set, if you create a new file, the default is going to be zero. So we need to set this up. And this is where you need to understand the scale of your scene in order to be able to configure that parameter correctly. And if you look at my material tester here, I've got the, the little boxes that indicate one inch, one centimeter. And I think that I'm going to use a value of 2.5 centimeters as my scattering depth. Think of scale as your general scattering depth. And wow, look how strong that is. So the next thing that we do is come up to the radius, which are scaling values. 1.0 means that 2.5 centimeters is the simple value that's used for all three channels. But we want to modify it so red is going at a greater distance than green and blue. So I'm going to start by taking green and blue and taking those down to 0.5 to give us coloration of the subsurface scattering. But I'd like to bias this even more by taking blue and dropping that down to maybe 0.2 to make it more warm. And this is where I would then come down to maybe green and dropping it to 0.4. And this is where you would just come in and you would play with these values to dial in something that would give you the flesh tone that you're looking for. The next thing that we would do is come down to anisotropy. This is really important for flesh tones and skin. The developers have said that a value of 0.8 is the ideal value. So we would type in 0.8 and there we go. So that would be the general process of walking through to set up subsurface scattering for organic skin types of surfaces.